In a remote corner of the Tibetan Plateau, surrounded by some of the world's tallest mountains and deepest gorges, China is planning the world's most complicated super dam, and it's the biggest hydroelectric project we have ever seen. On mega builds, the dam could give China enough clean electricity to power the United Kingdom for an entire year. But the ideal location is one of the most inaccessible gorges in Tibet. A project this size could change the geopolitical power balance across South Asia. If the earthquakes don't get in the way, that is. Hey, this is Known Facts and for this special episode, we dive really really deep into China's insane plan to build the world's most powerful dam. China loves engineering. For the past 70 years, they have broken records in almost every industry, building more and bigger than most of the competition, and hydropower is no exception. China currently has about 87,000 dams. According to some reports, that's because with a population of 1.4 billion people, water management is crucial. Not only that, but they have redirected many of their major rivers in an attempt to supercharge development. But compared to what they are working on now, everything else fails in comparison. Even the three gorges dam. There have been some crazy plans to realize this project. In one of the original ways, they said that they were going to do it was to use a nuclear weapon to blow up that dam. Someone suggested that. Thank goodness the Chinese government was like, nah, we are not doing that. So it's kind of like this thing where it's the most amazing potential for hydropower on the planet but it's really tricky to extract that power. The Himalayas and Asia as a whole. In our research to uncover more details about China's mega dam, we figured it out that this river is where China is planning to develop a 60 gigawatt super dam capable of producing three times as much electricity as the biggest dam in the world today. If completed, this project would harness the natural power of one of the biggest rivers in Asia and produce enough clean electricity for tens of millions of people. Pulling it off would be an engineering triumph even for China. And not just because of its size, the dam is supposed to be built here in a remote and wild part of China that few foreigners ever visit. The mountainous area is prone to natural disasters and even getting the construction materials up there would be something worth celebrating. China's neighbors, India and Bangladesh, share the same river that China wants to build on and they are worried that a project of this size might seriously affect their access to water. Particularly in light of climate change and increasingly unpredictable water flow with all this to think about. It's crazy that China is even considering this to be honest. So before we look at how they might actually pull it off, let's try to understand why. Basically, China needs a lot of electricity, twice as much as the United States and eight times as much as Russia. At the moment, the majority of Chinese electricity is generated by burning coal. But that's pretty much the dirtiest way to do it possible. Coal produces way more emissions than alternatives, especially hydropower. So as China moves towards net zero and their demand for electricity keeps rising, the idea is to use more renewable sources of energy to produce electricity. As a result, China is investing in everything from solar panels and wind turbines to tidal powers and hydroelectric dams. In fact, since the 1950s, China has built tens of thousands of dams including the biggest and most powerful hydroelectric facility in the world. The Three Gorges Dam now after damming most of their internal rivers, China has turned their attention to their major international river and sand. There are a lot. That's because China basically controls most of the water in Asia. All because of this, the Tibetan Plateau with an average altitude of over 4,500 meters towards above Asia and covers an area five times larger than France. This insane altitude means that it's filled with glaciers and ice as so much that it's nicknamed the Earth's Third Pole. As all that ice melts, it forms many of the biggest and most important rivers in the region. Rivers like the Indus, the Ganges, the Mekong and the Yarlung Tsangpo. 
In fact, the plateau provides so much water for the region that it's almost known as the Water Tower of Asia. So, there was this idea that this mountain in western Tibet was the center of the universe. And then the four rivers flowed out from it. These rivers aren't just a place where people live. They're also the sites of the largest agricultural regions in all the countries they go through. Whether it's Pakistan, India, Southeast Asia, or China, right? So, if you think about it, if the food bowls of China, India, Pakistan, and South Asia are all along these rivers, if you're going to be an alien that invaded Earth, you'd want to take over control of the Tibetan Plateau because you'd be in charge of all of the water of half the world's population really fast. Okay, so these rivers are definitely very important. And to China, they could provide not only an enormous source of renewable energy, but geopolitical power over the downstream neighbors. We'll come back to that later, but for now, let's take a look at the exact river that China's targeting. This is the Yarlung Sangpo, depending on which country it's flowing through. It's also known as the Siang and the Brahmaput. Thanks to the insane amount of the white water and waterfalls it contains, many call it the Everest of rivers. To keep things simple, though, we'll just stick with the Yarlung Sangpo. It starts here at the Enjai Glacier and flows over 1000 km east until it reaches Namcha Barwa Mountain. From there, it turns south and runs into India and Bangladesh before finally emptying into the Indian Ocean. The river is incredible. It's the highest major river in the world and it's almost 3000 km long. It's also one of the longest. As far as we know, no one has ever traveled its entire length. And it's easy to see why this area of mat is where they are going to build the den. It's right next to the Indian border. And it's really isolated, right? It took ages for the British to figure out where the river actually flowed through that region. It's one of the most isolated places. The exact location that China is targeting for the dam is here. It's called the Yarlung Sangpo Gorge a sacred place in Tibetan culture, which is even said to contain a hidden entrance to the spirit world. You have different ethnic groups living within the Gojis. At the north, you have the Tibetans, and at the south, you have the Adi people. Then in between, you have the Bopa, a different group. The Tibetans have this idea the goddess's head rests on the Tibetan plateau, and her body curves around the river's bends, and her feet end up the Assamese plate. So, they considered an entire stretch of the river to be not just a sacred site but an embodied goddess. However, China is not entrusted in this place because of its spiritual significance, but rather because of its unique geography which makes it the perfect location for a massive hydropower mega project. That's because the river descends rapidly as it passes through the Goji. Here, as it curves around a 7.7 km tall Narva mountain in a huge arc known as the Great Bend. It depends more than 2,000 meter in altitude. For comparison, the Grand Canyon is only 1857 meter at its deepest point, making the Yarlung Sang Pogoji three times deeper for riverbed to mountain peak. So this is one of the steepest descents of a river on the planet, probably the steepest descent. The river begins at over 3000 meter and within 100 kilometer. It has descended to 600 meter, right? So it's one of the steepest descents on the planet. It's a giant natural wonder buried deep in one of the most remote and inaccessible parts of the world. It's so hard to get there, scientists are still discovering new species in this region every year. They are still finding new mammals that no one's ever seen before through camera traps in this region. I mean, that's extraordinary in 2024 to find new mammals, right? So it's an amazing place biologically as well. Sound crazy? Well, if it really is, before we take an exact look at the crazy dam that China's planning on building, we quickly now get back to the dam. The area of China's super dam is so remote that there wasn't even a major road here all year around until 2030. But the potential hydropower resources are just too huge for the Chinese government to pass up. Despite its mountainous surroundings, China has been developing hydropower on the Yarlung Sangpo for a while. As things stand, there are several other hydropower facilities further upstream Agu, Jesu, and Jha. 
but they are nothing compared to the 60 gigawatt super dell details about the actual plans are very vague either the government doesn't know exactly how they are going to pull it off yet or they don't want anyone else to know so this basically leaves two ways they could do it one of them is to build another cascade of dams down through the great koji and that's really problematic because this is a biodiverse region and that would really trash the place then the second way is to dig a tunnel from the highest reach of the river to the bottom reach of the river and release the water through the tunnel and then you create a lot of power coming out right but that would mean the water comes out right near the indian border so either way it's tricky and this second option seems to be most likely one so far in some cases like this one it just makes more sense to build a hydropower station that uses the natural flow of the water rather than backing it all up so as the biggest electricity consumer in the world china has an obligation to focus on renewable source of power but their neighbors also have a right to use the river that's fed them for centuries we don't know when exactly construction might start or even how much it's all cost but the fact that china is even considering this is kind of crazy but that being said china is kind of known for building what other countries can't and if anyone can pull this off it's probably them so the only question left is will they actually manage it and what will the consequences be for India and Bangladesh? This is one that we are going to keep a close eye on. So make sure to subscribe to Known Fact to stay updated. We'll let you know if anything gets moving on this. Thank you for watching this special episode and as always we'll see you in the next video.